Hi, and welcome to another episode of the world's most famous chess combinations. I'm your host, Valma Moos. Today's position is about possibly the most beautiful overloading combination in the history of chess. It comes from the games Adam Storre, New Orleans, 1920. It is white to move. Of course, he would very much like to crash through on the e8 square, but for now, the rook on e8 has enough protection from both rook and queen. Can you see how Adams undermined this defense and eventually won the game? If you like, pause the video for your first idea. I will count to five and then we will see the combination unfold. One, two, three, four, five. Adams played queen g4. Very surprising queen sacrifice. But if you see that black cannot take the queen, because then there will not be enough defense for the rook on e8, you understand why this move is possible. Actually, white is trying to lure away the queen from the defense on e8. But at the same time, white is also threatening to take the queen. So, now let's see what possible defenses there are. Toro could have played queen e8, for instance. But that would not work because of queen takes c8, queen takes c8, rook takes c8, check, queen takes c8, and rook e8, check, mate. So after queen g4, he chose to play queen b5. And now Adams continued his strategy. He played the amazing queen c4. Let's note that it was not possible for him to play queen b4, because then there would fall a bolt from the blue, and black would take the rook on e2 all of a sudden. Let's see what happens after that. Queen takes e2, and now for instance, rook takes e2, but after rook takes e2, I suppose that black has a small advantage. He is threatening to play rook c8 to c1 check and winning so in this position white would probably have to make some space for his king with let's say g3 but then black could play a move like rook b2 this attacks the queen on b4 and also indirectly protects the pawn on b7 white would have a sorry black would have a very good game in this case so back to the game where queen c4 was played very important because now the black queen cannot go through the queen on c4 to take the rook on e2 okay and now again it is black's turn to move again he's faced with the problem of the capture of his queen or the capture of his rook on e8 so he decides that he has to go back to d7 safeguarding his own queen and the rook on e8. But now Adams continued with queen c7, continuously chasing this black queen that is such an important defender of the rook on e8. And now if both rook or queen would take the queen on c7, then white would crush through with rook takes e8 check and mate. Okay. So, you can imagine that black had to move his queen again, back to b5. And we can see that the diagonal a4, e8 is of vital importance to black. It seems to be the only lifeline for where the queen can protect the rook on e8. So, what does white play? No, he does not play queen takes b7, which would be a grave mistake, again because of the possibility queen takes e2. For instance, rook takes e2. Rook c1 is finished, or after uh, queen takes e2, queen takes c8, queen takes e1 check, knight takes e1, and rook c8 is also finished. Well, then, what did he play after queen b5? He played a4! Exclamation mark. Again, the black queen is threatened. Now, Tora played queen takes pawn. And now the final fantastic point of this combination followed. Can you see what white played? I will give you another 
five seconds. Please pause the video for as long as you like. One, two, three, four, five. The final move was rook e4. And the beauty of this move is that it attacks the queen again. And now this black queen is really getting into trouble on this diagonal. Of course, if now, uh, let's say, rook takes e4, then queen takes c8 all of a sudden is winning. Or, if after rook e4, queen takes e4, then rook takes e4, and if black now wants to recapture the queen, rook takes e7, then rook e8 is mate. It's all about the problem of the back rank mate. So, his final move after rook e4 was to go back again to b5 again, queen b5. But now the move queen b7 is possible. And after this one, Tore resigned. He will either lose his queen or be mated. Note that there is no safe square anymore for the black queen on this diagonal. And note also that the defense, quote unquote, queen e2, is not possible because it doesn't take a rook. So simply rook 4 takes e2 and white is winning. A very stunning combination based on the overloaded black queen and the fact that she was chased away from the diagonal a4 e8. Well that brings us to the end of this fine combination. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please leave your comments on chessadelic.com and thanks for watching. Bye!